lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy. This time I'm reviewing The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie Lee. It is the sequel to A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, which I have already read and reviewed, so I'll post the link to that one down below. I love both of these. I recommend reading both of them. You could jump in with Felicity's story and just read A Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy if you really wanted to, but they're both amazing, so I recommend starting with A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. These are historical fiction following the Montague siblings. Book one follows Monty, who is this complete and utter rake. He's bisexual. He's got a crush on his best friend Percy. They go on this, um, this grand tour of Europe that doesn't go quite as planned and absolute chaos ensues and it is so much fun. Um, so highly recommend this one. Book two takes place about a year later, and it mostly focuses on Monty's sister Felicity, who was on the tour with him and Percy last year. We do get to catch up with Monty and Percy also to see where they are in their relationship and how things are going with them. So if you're going to read both, definitely start with A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue because book two is obviously going to spoil book one. But this book mostly focuses on Felicity. Felicity is asexual. She doesn't feel romantic or physical attraction to anybody, either gender. Um, but for the most part, just something she doesn't care about. It's not something she's interested in. Mostly it doesn't bother her, except that there are societal expectations, especially in the 1700s, 1800s, um, when this book is taking place, that she's supposed to get married. She's supposed to have babies. And that's just not something she's interested in. She's not interested in the traditional role that women are supposed to play in this society. What Felicity really wants to do is become a doctor. And she's absolutely determined that she's going to go to medical school and she's going to do it on her own. Um, and so she's been spending the last year really trying to do it, applying to every medical school she can. Um, both she and Monty have left their parents and are off trying to do their own thing. Felicity's in Edinburgh. While she's there, she meets this baker named Callum, who falls absolutely in love with him. And Callum's really sweet. He's really kind. He's dependable. If Felicity were going to get married, Callum's not a bad choice. But she's also dealing with the fact that she doesn't love him. Marriage isn't something she really wants. She really wants to become a doctor. Um, being the baker's wife and helping run the bakery is not really what she wants to do in life. And so she's struggling with what would be easier and more comfortable versus what she really wants to do. Felicity hears about this opportunity to work with her idol, Alexander Platt, who is looking for a new research ex um, assistant. And she's heard that he might be um, open to working with a female. So she goes to Germany to try to meet him. But the thing is that he's leaving for this expedition like immediately after getting married. And so she shows up in the midst of the wedding preparations and trying to meet him uh, in the middle of all of that. And the woman that he is marrying is actually Felicity's childhood best friend, Joanna, who had to move to Germany to live with an uncle after her parents died. And so they've been estranged for years and they have two very different life perspectives. Um, Joanna loves the girly stuff. She loves the dresses. She loves the party. She loves being part of society. She wants to get married. She wants to be in love. She is all about this wedding and Felicity um, doesn't want any of that. She actually kind of looks down on Joanna for being so simple. Like they used to play and imagine that they were going to be explorers when they were young and so she's Felicity is struggling with the fact that this is her best friend, but like they've they've separated. They've had this schism. They're at odds because um, Felicity's trying to get close to Joanna's husband. There's also another woman in here named Sim who is a pirate. Um, she agrees to take Felicity to Germany because Felicity doesn't have money to make the trip on her own. Um, Sim is black though, so she has to go in the guise of being Felicity's maid. Um, and Sim is this completely different character. She's very strong-willed. She's very comfortable in being feminine, but also she exhibits more like masculine traits as a 
as she's growing up on a pirate ship. Sims got the adventure that Felicity and Joanna had always dreamed about as children, um, but she plays a different role in society, being black, being a uh, pirate, being kind of ostracized. Um, she doesn't have to fill the society views of what a girl is supposed to be. She's expected actually not to be. But there's still sexism in even among the pirates because she's a woman. She's still not the same as being uh, a man, even if she's on a ship with other blacks. Um, so Sim is a totally interesting character that I was totally not expecting. Um, and I loved seeing her and getting to know her. I love getting to see Joanna. Um, I really love the way that this book deals with feminism and really looking at women, like several different women who have several different perspectives, um, who are all strong in their own ways, but that if we're really looking at feminism, looking at equality and looking at having a, the ability to make a choice, then Joanna's choice to get married and be girly has to be just as valid as Felicity's choice to be a doctor and push boundaries or Sim's choice to like be a pirate and just be one of the guys. I loved all their perspectives. I love the journey that we go on, going to the wedding, um, really having adventures. Um, this was not the book that I was expecting it to be, but it was still so, so good. So amazing. Felicity already made like huge leaps and bounds in book one from being the shy girl who pretends that she's into romance novels but is secretly hiding medical textbooks in the book covers. So she kind of, she grew a lot in book one, but in book two, she makes like huge leaps and bounds to really becoming her own person and figuring out what she wants and what she's going to do with her life. I really enjoyed getting to catch up with Monty and Percy and some of the other characters from the first book and seeing where they are and their journeys and where, where life's taken them. Um, I love the fact that we're dealing with an older society. We're dealing with, I think, the 1700s, maybe 1800s. Um, so it's a completely different society, but we're still talking about things that are very relevant and very real now. So we're dealing with asexuality and we're dealing with feminism, but not using those terms because those aren't terms that would have been used at the time, but in a way that feels like this is part of that world, this is part of that society, that this is totally stuff that was happening. It just wasn't in the mainstream. I love that. I love the fact that we're dealing with um, Felicity as an asexual because asexuals just don't get attention in that way. They're either ignored as characters that just aren't interested in anybody right now, um, as opposed to somebody who's not interested in anybody at all. And Felicity does get her moments to explain it, and she's wrestling with the fact that she could get married, she could have a normal life with Callum. But she's also dealing with the fact that she doesn't feel that. She doesn't feel that for Callum personally. She doesn't feel that for anybody. She's looking at her brother who's bisexual. And she's like, no, don't feel that way about girls either. It's not that Callum's a guy. It's just that I don't feel it for anybody. And Felicity really just takes it, takes who she is and really owns it. Um, both as a person, both like her sexuality, but also her role in society as a woman wanting to be a doctor, something that is only men, um, and trying to figure it out on her own. So it's a great book, both from LGB per L it's a great book, both from an LGBT perspective, but also from the feminist standpoint. So I just I ate this up. I loved it. There's tons of adventure. It's funny and sweet and poignant all at the same time. Um, I love Mackenzie Lee's writing. It is just so inviting. <laughs> Like you just get into this world and you're just encompassed in it and it feels so real so much fun so much adventure so much humor and touching like lightheartedness um so super love the story so i highly recommend both books totally go check them both out they are both amazing let me know in the comments below if you've read either of these and what you've thought of them my review for book one a gentleman's guide to vice and virtue will also be linked in the description below so, peace out i love you guys and keep reading bye